right, our final speaker this afternoon is Peter Skold. It's the American pronunciation. Mine is perfect. <laughs> Uh, Peter is a professor of history, Sami culture, and society development at Umea University. Again, perfect. Okay. <laughs> In Sweden, he's director of the Center for Arctic Research and senior researcher at the Center for Sami Research. From the basis of extensive publication project management, he's been in the group of applicants for some of the most extensive multidisciplinary social science projects at Umea University. His research includes historical demography, indigenous health transition, and northern cultures. He's been a scientific expert in official public and academic investigations, a member of the Working Group 11, um, president of the Demography Family Network within the European Social Science History Association, uh, and many other um, uh, roles which are uh, on your, in, in your program. Uh, He's also co-editor of Indigenous Peoples and Demography, The Complex Relation Between Identity and Statistics, published in 2011. His paper is titled Salience, Stakeholders, and Sustainabilities, Perspectives from Arctic Research in Sweden. Peter Stoll. Thank you so much. And as someone said at the Arctic Frontiers Conference last week in Tromsø, uh, I'm fairly interested in science, but I come mostly because of the nice introductions. <laughs> <laughs> Yesterday, Betsy uh, inspired me to uh, open up my presentation with this image. Uh, I'm the last speaker of not only today, but of two days. And this is a drink. It's a famous drink from northern Sweden. It's called Kiruna Surprise. <laughs> and it's a glass of vodka. And with all my artistic skill, I tried this morning to, to add a bite dot there. That's a drop of Tipex. That's the surprise. So Kiruna Surprise is waiting for someone today. But uh, yes, I have a presentation. I did change it uh, slightly this morning. Um, I realized, but because what was not in the brilliant introduction, I think, is that I am also the rather recently elected IASA president, the International Arctic Social Science Association. And uh, with the final words from, from Mark, uh, uh, I, I think it was an even better decision when I, I, I thought that I, I really want to have a social science approach to this and, 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 and address some research challenges from a social science perspective or a social science reality. And uh, it actually rhymes pretty well with a stakeholder theme too, because very much of, of these questions around stakeholders, I actually have had a paper that I thought I should build my entire presentation on, that I skipped that. Those are some of the simple but major questions addressed in this paper that I made together with a number of colleagues, Karina Keskitalo, uh, Suzanne de la Barre, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, I'm, I think it will be an interesting paper. I will just present indications. But what research is, and, and what social science especially address, of course, is that research must have the ambition to be relevant. Relevant generally, but relevant especially for the people in the Arctic. And um, do anyone recognize the slogan? Where does it come from? University of the Arctic. But it's pretty good. Research for, with, and finally, and perhaps most importantly, by the Arctic. That's an important ambition. But speaking about stakeholders, there is a great complexity around it. Mark has addressed it, others have addressed it previously during these days, and, and it's really, really difficult to, to locate them sometimes. Some groups are obvious, some individuals are obvious, but there is a gray zone where we find difficult to navigate. Um, 
Oren Yang, among others here, have addressed over and over again that the Arctic is under constant change and so is the stakeholder landscape. Governments have been in the Arctic for many hundred years. Uh, extractive industries and, and other industrial uh, initiatives perhaps not that long, but today they play an important role. And sometimes, not rarely, the people of the Arctic find their attitude colonial and paternalistic. And, and what does that then make when we should deal with them as stakeholders? Um, also, the, sh the stakeholder context itself is changing, um, not least from an indigenous perspective, where I, I would argue that empowerment has increased over the years. There has been a more stable and strong infrastructure in terms of organizational efforts. Uh, but we are still left with questions who can really represent a complex indigenous people uh, or peoples, of course, since there is a variety and complexity also within the indigenous world. And those are challenges we meet in, in, in more or less every event that we take place in, not least those with a political agenda. And uh, unfortunately, we must conclude that this far, uh, the privilege of defining uh, the relevant research problems still remain largely with outside stakeholders. Uh, it's slowly changing. It's, I, I, I'm not a pessimistic person. I see progress, uh, but it goes really slow. Um, and, and you might argue local stakeholders are very often neglected. Um, and again, referring to Oren Yan, these changing processes that goes on are sometimes linking processes, sometimes delinking processes uh, that has the effect to, to um, join the Arctic with the outside world or to frame it from the outside world. And, and, and those are, are two distinctively, of course, different uh, processes going on. And within them we find uh, many Many actors that want to be stakeholders of the Arctic and they find different arguments why they should be. They represent a certain region, science, environment, expertise, trade, history gives them a right to be a stakeholder and so on. And, and, and this makes this stakeholder picture even more complex and difficult to uh, understand, not least in these days when the Arctic is of such interest also for many countries outside the Arctic. Social science has not had a significant position within Arctic research for a long time. Uh, I guess some people would argue that it still doesn't. If we look back, to the International Polar Years events and the International Geographical Year in the, in the 50s, and also the most recent IPY, I would argue that the, the, the position of social sciences has been very weak. From the start, very, very weak uh, in the last IPY, tr true progress, but much left to achieve, if you ask me. And we can see this also in the formation of, of organizations like the Arctic Council. Uh, IASC. IASC had a working group introduced for human and social sciences, last of all working groups. Uh, ICARP, oh, we have tried some, and when there was the ICARP 2, in the very last week, they, they, they found out that, oh my God, there is really no chapter here dealing specifically with humanities and social sciences. Can, can you please do something really quickly here? And it was more or less the same thing now. We squeezed in a humanities session in Toyama in April in the very last minute, two weeks after deadline, uh, because the, the um, IASC president uh, um, try to act uh, to, to, to make them change uh, their mind. So, so addressing Mark again, uh, the natural scientists don't find very often uh, a natural position for us in, in, in the big context. 
Sweden is unfortunately also a black sheep of the Arctic family. We have been really late with everything. We were the last country to take on the chairmanship of the Arctic Council. Uh, we were the last country to present an Arctic strategy report. And we were the last country to establish a university-based Arctic research center. That happened a little bit more than two years ago uh, in, in Umeå. And, and that's where you find me these days. And, and we try to blow up ourselves and say, this is excellent. We have an Arctic center now. Oh, we do a lot of things. And we do a lot of things. But we are three people. And, and that was partly my question to Oren earlier today about power relations. Uh, it's very difficult to be an equal partner to countries that has Arctic centers with 80, 150, 200 researchers to put in. Uh, and, and, and we are left with this, which is not really true because we have also 220 affiliated researchers not sitting in our center, but working on the university and give us a, a true opportunity to, to use uh, in matchmaking processes. The timing for this center was perfect. Uh, it would have been perfect this year too, because so much is happening. It was not difficult to persuade the university leadership to, uh, to take this initiative politically, environmentally, uh, and uh, scientifically, so much was going on uh, in the end of 2012. And uh, just to give you an impression of what social science is doing, uh, I want to show you the chapter list from the forthcoming Arctic Human Development Report number two, which will be released any day now. Uh, I've heard for a couple of months. Uh, uh, the red chapters here are the new chapters, and it, that indicate that this mirrors, hopefully, some of the changes that are going on in the Arctic with demography, identities, geopolitics, globalization, and community viability and adaption as, as new entries in, into this, hopefully, uh, influential work. I am involved myself in the cultures and identities chapter together with Peter Schweitzer and Olga Ulturgasheva. Uh, what I briefly want to, to show now, uh, and that's pretty much what is left of the presentation, is some of the major challenges that Arctic social sciences um, see today. And this is not new, but I think it's useful to to put them together like this. And this is to some extent also from a Swedish perspective. That was my initial title of my talk, so I, I, do, I will do have a Swedish perspective to some of these items. Um, challenge number one, concept and identity. So, you know this, the stereotype picture of the Arctic, Murmansk by night. Uh, and, and many, many has not really understood <laughs> that's all right exactly yeah that was a nice song though Liverpool group in the 1960s, but I can't remember which. Um. <laughs> oh, uh, no, it was, um, well, I know, I think it's um, Manfred, Man. Manfred Mann, exactly. <laughs> uh, well, back to science. Um, this, this makes a confusion for many people, who, who and not least natural scientists, of course, uh, that, that this uh, geographical unit also represent um, the Arctic. Uh, another thing that confuses not least people in Sweden is, is the concept itself. Uh, my Britt uh, explained to us that the Arctic is, is not a strong piece of Swedish identity. And it actually goes for researchers too. Uh, when I started the affiliation process at my university and I, I located relevant researchers and I, 
I, I talked to them and I said, would you like to be an affiliated researcher? And they said, well, but you know, I studied the lemmals up in the mountains. And I said, yes, that's very Arctic. Is it really? I thought it was northern. And, and, and of course, and do you recognize the map here? I thought it was from 1595, but I'm, I've been wrong before. So, uh, But you know, uh, when do we talk about the Arctic? When do we talk about the polar region, the circumpolar area, the Barents region, the high north and Swedish context also, northern Fennoscandia, Lapland, you could drop a lot of that. And, and it's confusing for people when it comes to identity building, to see themselves as a citizen of an area, a member of an area, or uh, a researcher connected to an area. So, so these are remaining challenges. Um, and then reality, of course, tells us that we are depending. When we say we want to do relevant research, but it's not a free choice, of course. We all know that. Uh, you can listen, you can speak with people in the Arctic and they tell you, you should do research on this. And I say, yes, I want to do that. But I have no money. So, and where do I find the money? Well, first of all, we have the, the research organizations, IPY, IASC, ICARP, UARCTIC, acronyms, uh, that tells us which is the most relevant research to do. And if we want to stay true to these organizations, well, we limit ourselves. At the same time, why do we have these prioritizing processes if researchers should not respond to them? So there is a balance that is tricky. Uh, another one then, the funding agencies. Uh, we need the money. And we have, I would say, better opportunities for Arctic social science funding today than ever before. Uh, so many great initiatives. These are just a few of them. Hopefully when Canada and the Un European Union solves their issues, also the Horizon 2020 will offer us some opportunities. It's excellent. We won a uh, $6 million project from Mistra last year. It's very good. Uh, Nordforsk has another great call now for Scandinavian researchers and, and, and others too. But they give us directions. They limit us. They say, you, if you want this money, you must stay within these fields. You cannot go outside them. So is that then mirroring what the Arctic people find most relevant? Hopefully. Um, this is the project we have. It's on uh, governance, of course, and, and uh, connected to mostly some of the major uh, extractive industries areas. Politics. Uh, national politics, international politics gives us directions, not only ideas, but actually also encourages us to do specific kinds of research and offers their researchers different opportunities to perform. And again, we have the power relation involved. So where is Russia going now? Uh, well, they would certainly have more difficulties to do uh, source studies since the largest library in Moscow bur was burned down this night. Ten million scientific books lost from the 16th century onwards. Yeah. Uh, US is taking on the chairmanship. Uh, they give us ideas and, and, and recommendations. They tell, this is what we are, we'll, we'll f especially try and do something uh, important and good with, which is excellent. Um, is there a strong social science profile in, in this from a research perspective? Uh, yeah, well, uh, to some extent. Uh, as, as a surprise to many, health research is often included into social sciences. It's, it's not, it never happens, I would say, almost never happens else than in the Arctic context. But they put us together with, with health, which, which is good because that is the people, of course. Uh, and, and there are teams here that relate to social sciences. I can personally say I would have liked to see more. But maybe this is progress, on the other hand. Uh, and I am very impatient. Um, challenge number six. Well, now we, we, we um, mention stakeholders more specifically. Um, because 
it is also one of the major challenges to Arctic research. I would say we have not done very well. Uh, I think perhaps Mark and others can agree with me that there are a lot to achieve yet when it comes to how social science can engage stakeholders in a decent and important way, not only as objects but as agents of research. And that is the whole idea of community-based research, of course. But uh, I, I would have liked to be able to present to you a long, long list of successful community-based research projects. Mm, a list is possible, but a long list of successful projects, not yet. Uh, we have tried with our project, we have a long list of different stakeholders involved. We have tried to work very seriously with this. Uh, which also means that uh, we have, and this has been neglected very often, the financial reasons. We, the, the stakeholders are included in the budget. As Maybrit said, reindeer herders are very often supposed to participate in meetings and, 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 and uh, symposiums and whatever. And, and, and nobody pays them. They have to leave their work for several days. They, they must be on the payroll. It's, it's obvious, and, and at least that we have achieved. And we brought them on early in the process. That's another important achievement. Not to build your project first, and then you go to the stakeholders and ask them, what do you think? We have been working six months now. We had the stakeholders on board before we sent in the application. That is important too. And of course, they are with us along the way. And we, we work with... Uh, town hall meetings, scenario workshops, etc., with, with a strong influence of, of our stakeholders. And we strive to make joint publications with them too. So those are small steps to, to some kind of a progress. Uh, and if science wants to, uh, to reach their goals, they must be visible in the world outside universities, in text and in talk. Uh, this is from this summer, a big political event in Sweden, uh, where thousands of important politicians and other people uh, meet. And there we were on the square shouting, the Arctic is on fire. And <laughs> many people stopped to listen, actually. And. Uh, Globalization, we have talked quite a lot about that. Uh, the non-Arctic member states. At, at the last IASC, no, not IASC, ICAS conference in Prince George in May, I had a presentation and a Chinese guy stood up uh, and he said, I'm from China, I'm a lawyer, uh, the Arctic is a sea, why do you talk about Arctic countries? We all have access to the sea. And what to say? Well, I answered him, well, my starting point is the people. And four million people <coughs> live in the Arctic. That's the starting point for me. And then comes the ships. Well, he accepted my argumentation, but I'm not sure that we agreed. And I, I'm totally convinced that we can achieve a lot together with the observers in the Arctic Council, with the great research initiatives that are now taken outside the Arctic eight countries if we work together. And if we not only uh, let these countries sit in and listen, but we demand that they shall be active participants and, 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 and do something together with us. Hopefully pay for some of, of the costs too, of course. Uh, and uh, a perpetual challenge, multidisciplinarity. We talk about it, but we don't see very much of it, if you ask me. We can join the, these large funding agencies. They ask us to go together with people from many different disciplines. You must be represented by at least four disciplines, five disciplines, and we do that. And in the end, we do what we have done all the time, and we try to put it together in some way. But it's not true multidisciplinarity. And I think 
The challenge is even greater when we try to incorporate humanities and social sciences into these natural science processes. But we must also learn to think in new ways, to work in new ways, and, and, and not least monitoring results such as large databases is entering also the world of Arctic social sciences today. Uh, demography most specifically, of course. Uh, and, and, and to meet and, and to work together. And finally, challenge number 10, ethics, which can never be stressed enough. Um, I, I, we, we have ethical guidelines for research generally, for even for Arctic research through IASA, but mostly they are applied very differently in different countries. And I, I, I would see more emphasis on a development of ethical guidelines <coughs> in the perspective of stakeholder engagement and how we do research. And this has also been discussed by several participants here. Not only what kind of research do we do, but how do we do it. Very, very important. And finally, uh, yes, two glimpses from the past months. Uh, when you think that, for example, traditional knowledge or indigenous knowledge uh, has been fairly well introduced in, in, into different contexts and you sit in at the SDWG uh, meeting in, in Yellowknife in mid-October and the permanent participants have prepared uh, a draft of traditional knowledge, how that can be introduced into the work of the council in, in, in a, an appropriate way. And the council see no opportunity whatsoever to acknowledge it. That is surprising, I think. And I talk with people after, I say, why, why did you say, why, why did you do like you did at this meeting? And they say, well, we are afraid that this will have a negative impact on the uh, impression of what the Arctic Council is doing. And I, uh, uh, but there were others who said, but we think the opposite. Uh, denying this is, is, is giving the Arctic Council a bad reputation. So I, I, I hope that future will correct this in, in, in one or the other positive way. Uh, final slide. Um, if you haven't heard of the UCCARP, I want to mention that this is an in initiative that, that I have some hope that it can contribute to a better um, stakeholder uh, incorporation into Arctic science. It, it was uh, from the beginning meant to um, introduce indigenous peoples uh, into the ICARP-3 process, but now University of the Arctic ha and, and, and others, IASC for example, has decided that no, this will be a long-term process and, and there will now be questionnaires and surveys uh, sent around to as many possible stakeholders as possible in the Arctic in order to find out what are their research priorities, how do they want to be engaged, what are the obstacles, what are the opportunities. And this has not been done properly uh, before, so I look very much forward to see the results of the UCARP process. Thank you.